what we're going to be going over here is a fair value hedge using a put option on some stock. And for example, here on 11.3x1, Corporation A purchases 8,000 shares of Corporation B stock for $50 per share. It's classified as available for sale here. And they purchase a put option on this stock here to hedge the risk that the stock will decline in value. So what they want to do is they want to lock in any gain on the stock here that they purchased at $50 per share. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at here is a designated this put option as a fair value hedge. And first for our put option here on the Corp B stock, uh, the premium, the put option, the price paid here, the premium price is $600. And the notational value, those are the number of shares that they have the option here to sell with this put option, 8,000 shares. And the put option price or the option price here or the strike price per share is $50. And then there's an expiration date here as well. Okay, so what we have to do here with this put option here. We have to break it down here. We, we're going to be given the market price here per share and you're going to see it's a decreasing market price here over the dates that we're looking at. And then we also have to have the time value of the option uh, on this on this put option here. So what we're going to do here with the put option, uh, we're going to have a strike price here of $50 and that's um, that's the price that you can sell this stock at. So it's that preset price here. So we're going to be looking at a decreasing price in our stock here. So say for example here we get down to $45 per share on the stock here. Uh, we can buy it for $45 per share the market price here but we can turn around and sell it for $50 per share here the strike price with this put option. And then we'd be making $5 per share profit on the stock. Okay so let's go up and let's look at this put option here and how we'd record it on our balance sheet and on our income statement. So um, the put option as a fair value hedge. Now this is where your special accounting uh, comes to report the fair value of the option itself here and the stock that you have the option on. You got to report its fair value on the balance sheet here and any unrealized gains or losses on those on the option and the stock itself get recognized as income here, unrealized income here on our on your income statement. So that's the key here when we're dealing with those fair value hedges. So first off, let's go down and let's look at what we're talking about with the, what we talk about this fair value hedge. So we're going to have uh, these accounts here. We're going to have the put option account here and then we're going to have also so the available for sale uh, security here, that Corp B stock here. So what we have to deal with in this case is we have to determine both the put options fair value and any adjustments uh, for available for sale stock here, uh, the uh, a fair value of this stock itself. And any changes that we have here in our put option account and our available our fair value adjustments here that the stock itself or the available for sale security here get recognized over here as unrealized holding gains or losses here on the income statement. So that's the key here um, when we're talking about the fair value hedge. So when you're talking about the put option itself here, it's going to uh, you. It's going to increase in value here as the price of the stock goes down, and then um, with the S or the available for sale security or the stock itself, well, it's going to decrease. You're going to have to adjust it down here as the price of the stock goes down. So what we're talking about these increases and decreases here in our put option and our available for sale security here are going to offset each other. So what you're looking at here with the put option here, any increases in the put option would be an unrealized holding gain here on our income statement. And the case here with the security itself here, the any a fair value adjustments that we make to the security any in this case the decrease here would go as an unrealized holding loss here on the income statement. So what we're going to end up doing with this fair value hedge when we re, uh, record any of these unrealized holding gains and losses here the put option any gain in the put option here is going to be offset by any loss here in the fair value adjustment to the stock itself. Okay so let's go up and let's start with this put option here and go through the mechanics here to look at how we record that here. So first off, let's just start here with the put option itself. When we purchase that option, we debit our put option account here for $600. And then the put option itself here, we paid cash here, reduce our cash by $600. Now let's look at how we handle this here. So 
with the put option here and then that's for 8,000 shares here the option in this case to sell 8,000 shares here so we're going to be looking at the purchase of the option here that date and then we'll have some other dates here and then we're going to actually settle the option we're going to exercise the option here on 630x2 so what we have to break this down when you have the put option here you're going to have the intrinsic value portion that's the change in the market price that we have here and that we have to determine here that change and then we have the time value uh, portion here of the option and that's really the option uh, premium uh, as it decreases over time over over the time period here so we got to deal with look at both of those changes here the, ch the intrinsic value change of the um, option here and the time value change of the option and those have to be re reported here in our put option account so first looking at um, this option here the intrinsic or the market chains here uh, when we purchased it uh, market price here fifty dollars per share and then that's our strike price here that's what we can sell that stock at but then the next period here at the uh, that period here at the end of the year here it, it was still at fifty dollars per share here so we didn't have any intrinsic change on that stock the market price didn't change therefore that doesn't affect our put option account okay but then we get down here to 331x2 this next date here where it's now dropped to forty five dollars per share of the market price so it was sitting at fifty dollars per share here previously and now it goes down to forty five so we have a reduction or a change here fifty dollars or five dollars per share so that's going to actually increase our put option account here. So this is the case here where, well, $5 per share, we have the option here of an 8,000 shares. So there is going to be a $40,000 unrealized gain here uh, on that uh, put option. And then uh, the put option itself, we debit that here for $40,000. Okay, and then looking at our last period here when we settle this option here, uh, price was sitting here at $45 per share it moved down to $43 per share so we have a change here a reduction of $2 per share so again this is going to increase our put option account here because we can sell it here uh, at 45 and we purchase it at 43 so it's got some value this put option here a $16,000 so there that $2 per share reduction here times the $8 uh, 8,000 shares that is $16,000 here is an unrealized holding gain here again as income on the income statement okay so we've taken care of our intrinsic portion here now we have to deal with the um, time value portion and that's simply looking at the change in the options value here and that we're looking at and we look at it from period to period just as we did with the stock here so we started out with six hundred dollars moves down to 375 so we got the change here is a negative 225 reduction then it moves down to 175 so we got a change here of 200 and this is strictly in a dollars here 200 dollars here and then it moves down to 40 from 175 so we got a negative change here of 135 dollars so when we're talking about the time value that's simply reducing our put option account here just as we had up here two hundred twenty five dollars two hundred dollars and hundred and thirty five dollars okay so and those uh, put options here the reduction in our put option gets recorded here as an unrealized holding loss in this case that's on that in time value portion here uh, you can see the matching across here 225 200 here loss and then 135. Okay, so we've taken care of our put option here, recording both our intrinsic, that's the market change here, and that time value change here. So now what we have to do is we have to settle this option here. So all you're going to do here with that is you're just going to net out your debits and your your increases in your debits here and your decreases in your credits here and you're going to come up with a balancing amount here in your put option account uh, fifty six thousand forty dollars that's what it figures out to so uh, at the settlement we would just have our debit here we'd credit that out here for fifty six thousand forty dollars so now what we have to do is we have to come up with determining if we have any realized gains or loss here in that case so what we would go over here the our cash what we actually re received here uh, on this put option here uh, because we had this let's look at it here these at the settlement date here the intrinsic or the market price is forty three dollars per share here strike price here fifty dollars per share so the difference here we're going to receive fifty dollars per share here when we, we can sell it at fifty dollars per share buy it at forty three so we have a net change here of seven dollars per share times those 
8,000 8, shares here. So we would have had a cash gain here, a received cash here of 56,000 on the settlement. Okay, so we've got our debit here on our put option of $56,040. Uh, excuse me, a credit here after we close it out. And then we have a debit in our cash account here, 56000 So the balancing amount here would be an unrealized holding uh, loss here. Uh, I, excuse me, a realized holding loss here, $40 per share, or $40 a net amount here. Okay, so that's taking care of our settlement here. Uh, in fact, it probably was a pretty good deal here because we only paid $600 here for the option to purchase those stocks or to sell those stocks here and then we actually made 56,000 here on on the op exercising the option here and this is only a balancing entry this uh, realized uh, loss here in this case of $40 that's only to balance the difference between what was sitting in our put option account here at the settlement date and what we get in our cash account here okay so we've taken care of our put option account here and now we just want to get into the available for sale security itself to make our adjustments and this is uh, pretty simple here to do here we have to adjust this available for sale security of the Corp B stock again that's because of this fair value hedge and we're adjusting it to its fair value so uh, when we purchase the uh, stock here that was $50 per share 8,000 shares so we debit our available for sale here for $400,000 and then up in our cash account we would have credited or reduced our cash by $400,000 but now for each of these periods here that we had to make our adjustment that was a 331 period here we adjusted it down here because it dropped in value here by $5 per share times those 8,000 shares so we credit or reduced our of our fair value adjustment we reduced it here by forty thousand dollars and then that would have gone as an unrealized holding loss and again on our income statement here that's the key here with these um, with these uh, fair value hedges here it goes as income here on our income statement debited that here for forty thousand dollars and then that final at the exercise date here 630 um, it would have also reduced uh, by two dollars per share here and you can go back and look at the numbers times those 8,000 shares so another reduction here um, fair value adjustment reduced down here by sixteen thousand dollars and then unrealized uh, loss here as part of income on the income statement here unrealized holding excuse me loss here of sixteen thousand dollars so you see what's going on here all right so what we've accomplished here with this hedge here is if we look at we're gonna look at this gain and loss their offset here so in the case here where we had the stock uh, for that first period where it went down by five dollars here uh, that was unrealized holding gain here uh, for the put option of forty thousand dollars and then it was an unrealized holding loss here on the fair value adjustment here by forty thousand dollars so they offset each other so uh, credit here debit here they offset each other so that it gives us uh, the income statement net effect is zero in that case and then looking at our uh, other date here that we had that settlement date here 630 we had that unrealized holding gain here of 16,000 here because it dropped in two dollars per share here for the uh, put option here so we would have credited an unrealized holding gain here um, on our income statement for sixteen thousand dollars and then for our fair value adjustment here uh, due to the fact that that stock actually went down here we had to adjust it down here by sixteen thousand dollars so unrealized holding loss here of sixteen thousand dollars again they offset each other here the credit here unrealized holding gain uh, due to the put option here uh, of sixteen thousand was offset by the fair value adjustment of the stock itself here of sixteen thousand dollars again they offset each other here so all we're really dealing with here was that uh, on the uh, time value portion here where that unrealized holding uh, 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 loss here for the time value portion here that wasn't offset but that was taken care of based on what we on the other numbers here and then the other uh, amount we had here was that forty dollar loss here only because our difference between our cash account and what we had sit a uh, cash received on that uh, selling that stock at a higher or strike price than the market price at the time here versus what we had sill uh, sitting in our put option account so what we what we want to point out here is these uh, gains and these unrealized holding gains and losses 
canceled each other out. So we didn't have, if we go down here and we look at it, the income statement net effect here would have been zero for the case here where the fair value of the stock was adjusted down to the market price here uh, itself here. But because the put option has value here when the price of the stock goes down here, then that was goes in as a, an unrealized holding gain here uh, in that case here. So they counteracted each other here. And the other point thing we want to look at here, let's just go back at for these available for sale securities, normally the unrealized holding gain or loss would be part of equity. But when you're dealing with the fair value um, hedge here, when you've, you're hedging that stock against the put option here, then any unrealized holding gain or loss here goes to income on the income statement rather than just part of equity or comprehensive income or equity. So that's really the key here when you're working with these um, fair value hedges. So again, fair value hedge, we uh, hedge the um, uh, the stock here when we wanted to protect any gains we had on the stock when we purchased it against its decreasing in value so we uh, bought this put option here for a premium and then when with the put option here that gave us the um, right to sell the stock at a preset strike price and if the market price goes down then we can sell it at the higher strike price and we get make earn the profit the difference between the uh, market price here and then high price or uh, higher price strike price here gives us a profit but when we deal with the fair value hedge just remember here you have to set up both your option account here and you also have to set up that and both of them are asset accounts here but you have to set up your available for sale security and you have to make adjustments here so both of them have to be adjusted at the fair value and then when we do make the adjustments with the hedge here they balanced each other out here any gains here were offset by any losses down here in your available for sale securities now that isn't always the case here this is the way the hedge is supposed to work here where you have any gains or losses in either of these accounts here are offset by any gains or losses in, in those. so your option account here has to offset the any adjustments that you make to the fair value of the stock that you have that option on but in this case we're looking at a good option here because any of the gains and losses offset each other okay so that'll summarize what we're talking about here with this put option here uh, using it as a fair value hedge against the stock that we purchased.